raised the seven hundred and ninety eight thousand dollars that actually created the acquisition company that saved the asset. We sold it to the uh, Corbell family, the Corbell uh, Champagne, and they built water wells all over the world. And what I asked for and retained was the bulk water rights so that I could get the water at a, at a bulk discount to be able to ship it and, and bulk and mass levels because I learned the water market, like if I'm a bottled water company, it's saturated. Nobody is loyal to any bottled water but the cheapest price. They don't really understand, especially at that time, what alkaline water was, electrolytes, things of that nature. Now people are getting educated and care more about their health. But I saw that if I don't have hundreds of millions of dollars to market that water, to distribute that water, I will end up in the same situation that they were in with Nestle. So the bulk water, retaining the bulk water rights was the smartest thing that you could do because I, the Most High kept telling me, if we don't have water in the cities for our people, if we don't have food, sustainable food for our people, they're going to let us die out and, and implode and kill ourselves. So yeah. I decided to shift then, you know, in 2004 and go super hard, like, you know, all my money, all my energy driving every day to Idaho to get the water to take the cancer victims. I went out and I'm happy because the knowledge of being a vegetarian for 20 years, working with Dr. Savies, helping different people remiss in their health journey, it's, it's priceless. It's, it's a wealth that no money can can accumulate or amount to there's no uh uh feeling of lust or fleshful desire that can fulfill you living your purpose the very reason you were created you know we all have a purpose and until you align with the divine and go after your purpose you're going to be empty inside you're going to be ch like a dog chasing his tail that's what we are as humans when we chase perceptions and we don't align with the divine and go after our purpose because we was created for a purpose for a reason okay so when you say you was divine for, and God created us for a purpose, how did you know? I, I understand that you said that. Yeah. In part, what we doing? But did you just know that the work? I'm an actor. Did something came over you for game and said, "Listen, I want to do more with my life." I'm, I'm gonna need you to repeat that. It kind of broke up a little bit. I just heard no. you say I, I wanted to do more with my life. Is that, what, is that what happened? You wanted to do more with your life? You just felt that acting was yeah. just... Was yeah, just... because because I, I I had reached the other side of the track. Like, I know what's on the other side of success in the entertainment world. Like, 99% of these people that's chasing the fame, they don't know what's on the other side of the fame. And what I mean by that is there's many attachments. There's many stipulations. There's things that come with that territory. And if you're not willing to compromise then you are not going to be able to survive and if you don't have or if you don't have a strong sense of self and 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 a strong foundation in god and a strong uh love of self and knowledge of self and morals and and, and ethics then you will be compromised because monkey see monkey do in the entertainment industry if everybody is wearing skinny jeans and everyone's wearing skinny now everyone is wearing skinny jeans. if everyone is bisexual or trisexual now everybody's trisexual because this is what you have to do to fit in so when you are like a, a warrior when you're like a maverick and you're going everybody's going right and you're going left and you don't conform to the norm or you don't adapt to the rules you will find yourself what i call be, being jeweled by the jewel like like you you cannot jew the jewel like we create the IP, we are the talent, but yet we still are owned and manipulated and puppeted and controlled when it comes to entertainment or any or any industry, athletic industry, entertainment industry. We don't control the actual ownership side of it. And we're the actual influence and the talent and the IP. And why do you think it, it's like that? Because that we've allowed ourselves to be empowered and sell out for the dollar versus ownership versus staying staying down long enough to be empowered by ownership we're empowered by talent we and that allows for us to sell ourselves short and take the quick pay and the quick fix and the quicker route out i would rather struggle a thousand days than have one day god's way so if, at the end of the day let's say one of these minerals or water or food company becomes a billion dollar company and my net worth's $100 million. You think it's hard for me to produce any film I want with any actor or actress I want, knowing that I have the relationship and the capital and the expertise to execute it? 
I mean, Tyler Perry did it. I don't see you not having the same problem, not a problem at all doing it. And 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 that's why I think Tyler Perry, you know, you have to give him his credit as a businessman, right? We I, I respect Tyler Perry for what he does as a business for the nation by providing jobs and being able to go that big with being selfless. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. I, and I feel like you feel success is responsibility. I feel like what he felt when I was in my prime, which is success is responsibility. You feel responsible and obligated to help others, you know, and that's why God blessed certain people to be a blessing. We blessed to be a blessing. It's about who could be selfless, not selfish. Do you know it's 40 million blacks in America, right? It's 40 million blacks, right? Now, yeah. well, now with the 12 billion Oprah's worth, the 3 billion P. Diddy's worth, the 2 billion LeBron's worth, do you know how easy it is for us to put $40 million into a trust for our, us as a nation and every individual got a million dollars in their trust and they were paid a dividend monthly without touching that principal of that million dollars. They would accumulate five to $10,000 a month of allowance and salary. They would have a principal that they could pull a loan against for business, for their homes or their cars that they could never touch because it's in a trust. And now all of our financial issues are over because we're empowered at the same time. This is how simple it is for us to end the black financial crisis. But I mean, from when you said to um, Dr. Sabi, since you said you know him very well, he said a key thing. He said, when I found the cure and I went on to the black leaders and the black leaders, he said, I realized that black leaders don't want to help nobody. Because he's like, the black leaders don't want to be involved in nothing that has to help the black people. Well, it's not that they don't want to. I think you. I think there's a correction there. They're not allowed to. They're not allowed to, because everybody is held because, accountable. Because once they once they once they say, "Hey, we're about to empower you with this kind of wealth and influence," you're going to play our game, or you're not going to play the game at all. And if you think or decide to get out of line, then this is what these are the consequences: Bill Cosby, Whitney Houston, Prince, Michael Jackson. Must I go on? No, you, 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 you're, 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 you're an awakened more. You understand the truth. Guam <laughs> Yasharala, Hebrew Israelites. Absolutely. The Moors were Hebrew Israelites and that's our bloodline, not a religion. And yes, we are awakening. Guam Yasharala, that means awaken the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. I'm so glad you brought that up. You can see I got my tassels on, right? Yep. My fringes. And, you know, this is the awakening that you know, why I love doing these interviews and being able to come aboard to speak to our people and be able to enlighten them and edify one another and let us know that we've been under a 400 year curse. You ever felt like everything you were doing in life, you were doing right, but you just wasn't getting nowhere. If you go to Deuteronomy 28 through 68, you'll understand that we are a, a people that were cursed because we did not keep the law, statutes and commandments of the most high and the most high cursed us as a people and that 400 year curse from 1619 to 1719 is 100 years 1719 to 1819 is 200 years 1819 to 1919 is 300 years and 1919 to 4 to 2019 is 400 years so the 400 year curse of us being the the the, the tail and not the head of us working for others and not having any rewards to benefit us having yokes of iron and being enslaved us being miserable our women not respecting us this is the identity that the Bible is proving that we are the true Jews. We are the same slaves that built the pyramids in Egypt are the same slaves that built America. And our people think, don't know the difference between Africans and African-Americans. We come from the bloodline of Shem. There was three bloodlines of Noah, Ham, Shem, and Jephthah. The Africans come from Ham. Most Africans don't grow beards because they are not of the true Hebrew Israelite bloodline of Jacob. Jacob's name was changed from Israel to Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel from, from Jacob because he birthed the 12 tribes of Israel. And Jacob is our forefather. And once we come back into these law, statutes, and commandments like Exodus 20 through 8 teaches us, we keep those, ten, those commandments, then the power of the Most High will break that curse because God is allowing this to happen to us. When he brought us out of slavery, he was like, oh, Moses, just get us out of slavery. Guess what happened? They start to, they say, oh, Moses, if you brought us out to slavery and now we ain't got no water, 
we gonna die in the desert, Moses. So Moses is able to tap the rock and living water came out of the rock. That's what the actual Trinity water looks like. It's 1.4 billion liters coming out of the rock. They got watered and all of a sudden they like, oh, Moses, we hungry, Moses. You brought us to the desert to die. Next thing you know, quail start falling and manna start falling. That's manna. It was waffles. That's bread. It's a certain waffle. So they had chicken and waffles. Please don't tell me them Hebrews was not the same blacks with all the complaining and murmuring. <laughs> you feel me? So when you so start what's to Roscoe, so what we so what do you think the Hebrew word for Roscoe's chicken that would be? <laughs> yeah, you feel me? The Hebrew word for Roscoe's and chicken and waffle would be Kwam Yasarala. They was partying. They had chicken and waffles. It was falling out of the sky, and the Most High said, damn, y'all still don't want to worship me. So they was, you know, basically doing lewd acts, women on women, men on men in the camps. People was doing whatever they want, eating what they want. They like, we out of slavery now. So God got mad and sent Moses to the mountain and gave him the Ten Commandments and said, look, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, Adam was the father of sin. I'm giving you a reconciliation before I send the father, Christ, right? Before I send Christ back, like I sent Christ back already to give you reconciliation. Now I'm giving you these commandments and these laws for y'all to follow. And those that follow them will have my protection. So I always ask pastors, I say, okay, if Christ died for us and he was crucified and he shed his blood to be the ultimate sacrifice and we all believe that and we got baptized and received the, the, the gift, which is the Holy Ghost, then why are we still being judged? They go, huh? I go, if Christ did everything for us, why are we still being judged? I said, let me make it simple for you. They go, uh, this is a pastor speaking. They go, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know. I said, we being judged if we keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, right? Which is, I can give you scriptures after scriptures and proving that that's exactly God's love language. That's exactly what our salvation is. You have to have faith and the word, right? And the faith is, and is the actions of putting the living word into action. That's why they say faith backed by works. You know, faith with no works is dead. So we got to have faith and keep the works. Wow. So it seems like you're headed, you're, 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 you're directing your efforts to a whole different level of where people aren't thinking about, which is famine. To say, hey, if we do get hit with famine, I've got that covered. If we do get if we do get hit where we're not able to obtain our thirst or quench our thirst, you can handle that on an alkaline level to where a lot of people don't even know what alkaline is. They don't even know what's the and you're providing the right alkaline that is tapped into your body source that goes directly with you. So yeah, so now so now when you talk about coronaviruses or this pandemic and these things that they're creating you now have not just food you not just have not just water you have not just minerals but you have the actual elements and resources that the most high intended for us as a people to have when it comes to his temple we are made in his image and so the reason why i've been a vegetarian for 20 years and working with dr sabi don't forget the dr sabi electric cell nutrition uh formulas and minerals and herbs as well these are all four or five companies that are set up through our global good news network to be able to provide the resources for our people at a time of such i've shifted my career and my focus to only being able to be a steward and being able to be able to provide at a time of such this was a 14 15 year ago uh commitment not knowing that anything like this was in in the future just following the spirit 20 year vet, 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 vegetarian. I know it was rough when you first started. It was, it was, it, it wasn't. And it was because what happened was when I was working with Insta foods international and going on to the actual farm in Idaho and seeing how agriculture is, is produced and how, you know, farming is, is, is operated. It gave me such a like firsthand cliff note basis on what I, you know, how it's done and it just it, it showed me i'm not eating this because if i knew if it what they did there on the farm and then how long it took for that finished product to get to you in the store that's three or four weeks of a product that already wasn't healthy that already wasn't groomed or raised right it wasn't poultry it just it just opened my eyes 
to an in, to the industry of our food business, and I was like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I'm not having it. And I, not only that, I want to do something about it and educate people. Now it makes sense why so much cancer and so much sickness is now starting to run rapid. Because a lot of people don't even understand some of this information that you know right now. I mean, cancer is on an all-time high right now. People don't even know what's going on. They're like, yo, where's all this cancer coming from? And I mean, you think about it. Back in the day, not to cut your whiz off, you know, the only cancer that you used to hear about was like, oh, uh, grandma's got, you know, throat cancer or, you know, she's lung cancer from smoking. You didn't hear about prostate cancer. You didn't hear about babies getting cancer. You knew you would get cancer if you smoke cigarettes. Now yeah. it's 90% of, you know, three, a good 70% of America. If you don't have diabetes, if you don't have cancer, if you don't have, uh, if you're not over the counter prescribed drugs, then something's wrong with you. Well, actually it should be the opposite. I mean, in actuality, America is the most obese country in the world almost. I mean, I've done travel around the world and I don't see, I, I go in some places and I feel bad because I feel like I'm the biggest dude in there. And I'm the- <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, and I'm glad you said that. Me being a traveler, working in China, working in Brazil, working you know, with the uh, Sierra Leone uh, first lady and the president of Sierra Leone, and ap- now going in the African region with what we're doing with electric cell nutrition. I'd, I'd like you have, understood why the rest of the world is way more advanced than we are when it comes to education when it comes to their farming their eating i mean the only thing that they don't have on us is infrastructure like their roads and school and things like that could be better like sewage and stuff but overall they have a better dietary better farming better um situation for them to be able to do everything wow So earlier you were talking about your production company. And I just wanted to make sure that I get it clear and everybody can understand. So you're saying to me that if an actor, an actress, somebody that's a filmmaker, anything that they need, they contact you through your production company and then you give them the direct access to YouTube. So you're more like the affiliate. So they go through you, you're the distributor, you handle everything and you say, okay, let's make it happen. So are yes. you only dealing with YouTube or just other film companies like Netflix nah, and other people? No, nah, um, well, well, the thing about it is, you know, with Netflix, obviously, the way they work, you you can either sell them a, a finished product or you can go get a deal produced by them to do original content. We have a showrunner, in-house showrunner. Once that content is complete and in the can and film, we have a showrunner that can go shop it to Netflix, Apple, Amazon, Hulu, all these other different platforms for, you know, purchasing, uh, potentially purchasing and then you licensing deals. So like what we wanted to do with Bigger Picture Production was be a one-stop shop for this content generation. Like a lot of people that have 30, 40 years, you know, 30 years in behind the scenes of working with Michael Bay, David Fincher, Jerry Bruckheimer, Spike Lee, just to name a few of people I work with. So I wanted to be able to give that knowledge, give the access of YouTube with that kind of knowledge to interns, to new filmmakers, new creators, and and allow for them to get an expedited uh, process in in the film. And a lot of people, a lot of things I noticed was that people weren't, everybody was creating YouTube channels and want to make content, but they didn't know how to monetize and make money off of it. So another thing we do with Bigger Picture Productions is actually show you how to aggregate all of your Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all of that into being monetized. Like doing, once I created the truth about Tupac with my partner, Asher Underwood, we learned the algorithm. We learned how that business model works. And we learned that there was nobody teaching the business model. So it became our, our model. And name the company again, Bigger Pictures. Productions. Bigger, bigger Picture, Picture Productions. Productions. Okay. Dot com. Yep. Okay. Go to info bigger and Picture. Bigger Picture, Picture Productions. And you'll see, uh, you know, that's. That's when we're, we're, we have uh, registered with YouTube at YouTube LA, New York, London, Brazil, Germany, they're all over. We get these facilities. So we figured since we have the access and we are a production company looking for cameramen, DPs, actors, actresses, content, why not 
make our business model around to where it becomes an ecosystem where it's constantly being used, content is constantly being created, and we can constantly sell it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Well, I, we definitely going to be doing some big business then. Definitely going to be sending some people your way. We're going to do right. something. Definitely. 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 It's a nice definitely. referral. It's a nice referral. It's also a nice uh, well, way to just network and keep everybody, you know, in position and in pocket and doing what they love and being able to, to network uh, unilaterally across the board and build more leadership and more empowerment, you know, unilaterally, not just had a, the power structure in one person's hand or one company's hand. Oh, I, I hear you. I hear you. I hear, but she, I mean, you've got the experience of working with the amount of people you work in at such a young age. Also, I mean, you look like you're ready to just to just put on the put on that put on that hat, sit on that seat, and say action. I can see it in your <laughs> face. <laughs> Absol absolutely, you know. It's, I can see it in your the face. Maturity, the maturity has definitely kicked in, and you know, I get down on myself a lot because. Obviously, you know, I'm like, you could be here. You could, in the, in the world's eyes, it's like, I'm a failure because I should be here. But in my heart and in God's eyes, I feel like I feel so rich and fulfilled with purpose that, like I said, in starting this interview, I'm not in a rush. You know, I've, I, as I get older and I learn and I live, I get better at being able to reenact that, right? So, gotcha. so why would I want to be in a rush to grow up and blow up and be a star and I haven't lived enough in order for my work of life and embodiment of life to be authentic. I think us young child stars, we haven't lived enough life to continuously to be authentic in our careers or had enough experiences to stay authentic in our careers because we got blessed with the success so early. Gotcha. But it's good that you were able to analyze and see to yourself that, look, uh, I understand what goes on on the other side. Let me put a break on it real quick. And because and, and, I know a lot of people won't be it because Hollywood will break you out here. Man, you know, and I got to give all credit to God, the most high and my family, my mom, my dad, my grandma, my grandparents, you know, just having, you know, a strong foundation of, of and examples. And, and more importantly, just the spirit. Like my mother says, baby, I might fail you, but God won't. So put your faith and trust into him. So early I was taught to lean on not my own understanding, but lean on the most high and, and that call upon him and to ask him, what do you want me to do? What's, you know, empower the spirit every chance you get. You know, empower the spirit always, always empower the spirit. If I could tell anybody anything, the key to my success was I, I didn't claim it. And I just empowered it through through uh, just empowering the spirit and asking the spirit, what do you want me to do? What do you want of me? And that's what happened. So Nipsey's a friend of yours, if I'm correct? Absolutely. Rest in paradise. Yeah. So how was that? How was that relationship, you and Nipsey and everything else? And, you know, oh, you man. Guys man, it was it was uh, one of those those bittersweet moments because. I had told Nip, you know, I was like, man, you know, we had filmed a movie called I Tried Together. And at this time, he was, his music wasn't as successful. He didn't have the first, he didn't even have his first demo done yet. And he used to hate that people would call, would say he looked like Snoop Dogg. And I said, man, I get the same thing with Tupac. I said, but I said, you know, if you put down this gang and the street shit and really, you have presence, you know, it's very rare when people, you go in a room, people like, who is that? You know, you want to know who that person is. So Nip had that kind of presence, you know, whether he was in the streets, whether he was in the music business, you want to know who he is. And then when you talk to the brother, his intelligence and his firmness about knowing who he is and where he wants to be in life, it, it's it's rare that you meet brothers. You know, we went to Hamilton, same high school together, you know, so I was one of the first, you know, to be on TV. So for me, I felt it was my obligation to tell him, like, look, bro. That, that's a blessing for people to see the energy of Snoop and you run with that. I started running with Tupac and look at me. And so you'll see on my Instagram, it's us talking. I got my arm around him. I'm filming a movie in St. Louis. He come in town to do like a walkthrough in, 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 in a, uh, one of the hottest clubs there. And I pull up and I got my Nipsey Hustle official marathon Crenshaw blue sweater and my heavy early uh, Nipsey blue uh, heavy early sweatsuit on with my Nipsey Pumas on. 
And I happened to pack that when I went to St. Louis to film this movie, not knowing that he was going to come in town. So when I get there in the club, he like, he love it. He pointed me out. I pointed out, he pulled me in the VIP, just me and him, the whole club, the whole city. This is like when his album just came out. When I say the whole city of St. Louis was just mobbing the whole club from inside, outside was packed. He see me, he point, he bring me in. I go to the back and George Panich, I won't forget his right hand. You know, it's just me and Nip in about five ace of spades bottles and he's got the mic and he's on stage rapping a couple of and we talking and we actually are talking about the dr sabi project i'm like yo nip you know i work with dr sabi you know i got footage with me and him i said let's come together and do a, this project together and he was like bet you know what i'm saying when i get back bet i love to see the content this is something i'm pushing he said i'm with this this movie shit i'm i'm really going deep and i'm like man i'm so proud of you i said remember that bone thugs and I tried, I told you this day would come. You'll be the man, you on top. I'm spitting in it. I'm literally spitting in his cheek pre-corona. You know what I'm saying? It's before corona. And I'm just telling him how proud I am not knowing this is the last time I'll see him in the flesh. Wow. wow. And so we shared that moment where he remembered that, yo, I didn't even, like, I was in his life when he didn't even picture all of this. Like, I, we had a conversation about, yo, you need to shift your life get in gear and go after this and stop playing with these street shit. And at that time he was like, man, I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? Little, little, I'm, I'm. And then when we had the conversation with St. Louis, he remembered and admitted that I was, that I didn't even picture it would be this big. So I kind of felt like not a witness to his success, but played a, not playing a part in it, but more of was just like a witness to, to even see when he was in, when he wasn't, you know, going after the greatness, he even was at a place in his life I knew when, when I knew him where he was still finding his purpose. And it's so great to see how far a brother can go when he makes that switch, when he switches from perception to purpose. I don't got to be a gangbanger. I don't got to be a drug dealer to be successful. I'm going I'm to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to be a businessman. I'm going to empower my people. And when he made that switch and went after his purpose, you can see nothing can stop you. They had to kill this man. He was so he was so connected in, in, in what I call a line with the divine. <sighs> powerful. He's a powerful brother. So I have another question for you. So since you knew Dr. Sebi, are you working with Nick Cannon to finish the project? Or is that even real? <sighs> no, nah, I, 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 I can't. I can't. You know what I'm saying? I can't really comment on what Nick is doing. You know gotcha. what I'm saying? Because for me. You know what I'm saying? I'm in a different place and a different project, total different project, total different situation. So, you know, I got I got footage with Dr. Sabi working with him and we have the actual products um, that he utilizes, too. So, you know, when it comes to, to what we give to people that for their health. So I don't know, you know, like with Nick, I don't know where his project is at. He is a good friend, and um, I really want to see the project out. But I know, due to everything that happened to him and what's going on, it's 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 a it's a touchy situation. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. But uh, yeah, man, I really, you know, I really, really want to say and appreciate, you know, just having the opportunity to to have this type of in depth conversation because. As you as you could tell, us as a people, we don't we don't really research. We don't really have that in depth conversation that's needed. We kind of just scratch the surface or talk about drama, or talk about this, talk about that. You know. So exactly. I really love what you're doing, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I need you to break that math down in because I, I want to make sure that people understand what you said. When you said that from the if we got forty million, forty how many? 40 million, million, about 42 million blacks to be exact in America. Right? Okay. And so when you look at Oprah Winfrey, who's worth, I think, $6 billion, right? You got LeBron, who's worth maybe uh, $1 billion. Jay-Z's worth, you know, him and Beyonce, $3 billion, right? Uh, Puffy, you know, he's worth a billion or two, or Floyd, right? So if you put all of the blacks that are billionaires together, it's still an equivalent 
to what Zuckerberg is worth or Beso. Like Beso's worth 200 million, 200 billion. Uh, uh, Zuckerberg's worth 100 billion, right? But what I'm saying to you, just the numbers and, sh and letting you know how easy it is to solve the financial challenges of black America. If $40 million was put into a trust, right? A trust. And every single person that was in that trust had a million dollars that was allocated to them and established their own personal trust. We could pay them off of the principal of that million dollars, a dividend of anywhere of five to $10,000 a month. And they would never touch the million dollar principal and they would be able to have whether they want to invest in a business, buy a home, that million dollars would be used as collateral because it would be in a trust that they could never touch that million dollars. And that million dollars is paying them a, a monthly salary allowance from the dividends of it being in the trust. And but they can use that million dollars as a loan to open a business, to buy a home as collateral. So as now collateral. you have right. So now you have 40 million 42 million to be exact blacks, right, or minorities, and we all are getting paid at the same time. We're all empowered at the same time. We're all out of debt at the same time. I mean, it takes $40 million to do that. And so when you put it in the numbers aspect, it lets you know that, that this problem could be solved so simple that they really don't want to do this, and they're not allowed to do this. Their hands are shackled. So the money comes with, with, with handcuffs. That part. Money comes with handcuffs. I couldn't have said it better. Wow. What money street comes you? with handcuffs. What street you walking in right now? Sunset, baby. Oh, sunset. Okay. <laughs> so question, how is your political aspect a attributes right now? Who do you, who are, are you going to vote? Are you going to say who you're going to vote for? Are you for Trump? Are you for Biden? Are you going to pick the best or the less evil? What, what are you going to do? So for me, you know, like with Cube, you know, I feel like our vote is 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 needed. But until we get something, it's like, why should we give our power up, the one power that we have, if we're not getting what we want? And, you know, when, when Obama when Obama came into office, my mom was like, son, you're not going to vote. I'm like, no. Nope. She's like, why? I'm like, you think just because I said presidents are selected, they're not elected. You know what I'm saying? I said each president was appointed at a certain time to do to carry out a certain plan. And he was prepared for that. And I said, um, she was like, yeah, baby, but you're not going to vote based on the fact that people died. You had your, your relatives that, that died for you to have the right to vote. I said, you know what, mom, on that note, I'll vote for that. But I'm not the one that's going to fall for it just because the president is black, that he's going to just all of a sudden take care of all of our initiatives and, and hook us up. It's not going to happen like that. And so seeing eight years after Obama in office and seeing four years of Trump in office, I'm actually a businessman and I've traveled enough to know the difference of the economy, the difference of what's happening on a global aspect. And I can I, I don't have to like and I don't have to agree with everything someone says. I actually can respect somebody calling me a nigga to my face versus behind my back. Now, Malcolm X made a statement. He said the biggest threat to us as a, as black America is the bourgeoisie, the white American that plays brother, 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 but really in the end is assassinating you behind closed doors. He's playing your friend in your face, but behind closed door, he's assassinating you. And this is what the Democratic Party has done to the nation. As you look at Lyndon B. Johnson, he says, you want to destroy the black nation. He says, I know exactly how to do it for 200 years. We're going to create something called welfare. And what he meant by that was making us dependent upon a government, making us uh, not independent upon ourselves, but dependent upon a government. So when you have welfare, you have Section 8, and you have all of these different things that you give to our women because you know that most of the men we're going to send to jail and we're going to capitalize on institutionalizing these men as prisoners, and then we're going to give the women these programs, which are welfare, Section 8, that now relies this woman trusts the government as the man of her household. This woman now looks towards the government as her money, as her support system and not the men. And so now we've been structurally designed for this time to where they're going to pull the wool from up under us. Section 8, welfare, unemployment, all of that's going to stop. And we've been so dependent upon it 
that we're not in a position to be independent without it. And so for me as a voting in this country right now, I'm with Cube, I stand on, they need to give us what we deserve until we're financially in a position to be able to compete. We'll never be respected and we won't be able to survive. So we have to have a financial shift and change and whatever, uh, uh, whoever's in office at the time, whether it's Trump, whether it's Biden, they're gonna have to give it to us. And united we stand, divided we fall. If we all keep running in as individuals, instead of coming together collectively, demanding and showing the empowerment of our strength, then we're gonna keep falling for it. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. So I already know who you voted for, or not voted. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, man, I just, I, I, I can't, I can't play the game, man. I can't lie to myself. I can't act like, you know, I can't, I can't act. I can't fake it. You know what I'm saying? Can't fake like, it. I can't fake it. You know what I'm saying? No. It's, 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 it's real. It's, it's real right now. And if we don't leverage our power to get something or to get what we want, then we lying to ourselves. Gotcha. 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 The story of your grandfather, I mean, is that was that the religious person in your family that got you to where you are right now? There's also another there's another question that I always want, I wanted to ask you as I'm listening to you. When you say uh, cross the tracks, were you ever have you ever in I don't want to say it to sound like ignorant. You can say whatever you want. You can you say ever, whatever you want. Have you ever got into the got into the situation where you had to get into a gang and anything like that in, in, in California? Of of, of course. I mean, you get uh, proposed all the time to join gangs and, and be a part of the gangs. Like a lot of my friends growing up, we had our own little cliques. We had our own little gangs. I was Grand Theft Auto in. I was jacking cars. I was running up, socking people, innocent pe like just doing stupid stuff. And but the difference with me at that age was that I always had a call and I had a grandfather that was in the church, in the spirit. He was a man that never yelled, never cussed, never whooped us. And, you know, he 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 was the living word of love he was a living example of wisdom he lived it he exu exonerated he he helped he was able to you come to him you have a solution you know instantly to your problem so i i mimicked that and watched that and was raised by that and that early age having that maturity and having that example in life saved me oh wow and then you, okay, so when you were giving out the word to Nipsey, you were going through your experiences like, look, brother, there's nothing out there. Listen to what I'm telling you. Go there's nothing you out go. there. You got much, you got so much more potential over here versus over here. You're different. You're set apart. The Most High has a purpose for you. And so when gotcha. you set apart and you got a purpose, you, you got to, you got to, you got to align with the divine. Hey. You got to align. Oh, man. Man, you oh, talking they, they're recognizing you. They're recognizing you. They're recognizing you. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. This is one of my favorite joints, La Petite Four. You know, okay. it's right here off the Sunset Strip. You know? Okay, so okay. I had to give y'all a little live cruise with yeah, you. Yeah, give me a I'm going to come out there, man. I'm going to come out there and sit down with you. I'm going to sit down right there where you are. We're going to come sit down. Thank you. Anytime, brother. I'm sorry. I have a bunch of folders with me with pictures and everybody. <laughs> and movies and all. You got it. You got it. I look forward to that, man. I'm serious. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been a great oh, yeah. interview. And anytime you want to do it again, you just bang my line. We can make it a regular. Oh, man, thing. we have to do a part two. It's, it's it's guaranteed. You know what I'm saying? So it's not even, I'm not even yeah, worried. Yeah, we might get some comments from some people that got questions, and then we'll come back in part two and answer them. Oh, yeah. They're going to have a lot of questions. A lot of questions. A lot of questions. A lot of questions. And I love where your mind is at. Your mind, a lot of people don't talk the way you talk. A lot of people don't, it's not where you at. So it's like, you know, sometimes you talk to people, you're talking over their head, but sometimes you got to be like, all right, I understand. It's not your fault. You just ain't grab the book or you just ain't interested. But you will find out very soon. <laughs> <You're> just, <laughs> that's, that's bars right there. That yeah, you will, you will find out. And talking about bars, were you ever a musician? Um, I, you know, I started out rapping as a kid and had a group uh, and called Scavengers. And we opened for Immature. We had a song called... You a playground player? Oh yeah. Well, I'm a playground player. Oh yeah. Well, we some play. We used to open up for Immature, and we used to get all the girls. This was like pre Alex Mack, and I had my little rapping career going, like with one of my best friends. And you know, one day Drake came to me and he was like, "Hey man, I saw your film you did called Gang Tape." Uh, he was like, "Man, I love that." I was like, "Yeah." He was like, "Man, I thought that was real." I said, "Yeah, everybody think that." I said, "We wanted to reflect reality so raw, we made people think twice before they." 
did their first home invasion robbery or drive by or join a gang. So we wanted to like have a Blair Witch about the hood. So he's like, hey man, you so real, homie, you wanna rap? I was like, nah. He was like, what? He's like, you don't wanna rap? I'm like, nah. He like, I'm like, man, rap is a pay cut. I said, I do movies for a living. I said, shit, my dick don't get hard unless we talking a hundred million. <laughs> he, he, said, he fell out laughing. He said, man, I like you. You gonna go far. You got a lot of integrity and you staying true to who you are. And this is Dre, you know, asking me to rap at the time because when I get to speaking, people be like, man, yo, you know, the shit you saying is so real. Like my little brother, he wants me to rap so bad. But I, I give him all of my like my my parables or like my, you know what I'm saying, my my little punchlines and you know, like I got a model. I, I got all these little models. If you ain't struggle with me, you can't bubble with me. You know what I'm saying? Or gotcha. you know, just little things I would say that over the years people will use, you know what I'm saying? And it comes it comes from the rhyming days for sure. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I can see it. I can definitely see it in you. I can definitely see it in you. If you'd have put out an album, I'd have bought it. Hey man, you know what? At the end of the day, playing Tupac was 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 gonna do it all for me, be able to get that music, little Jones out of me, you know what I mean? That little yeah. that little thing I got inside of me for music. But I'm actually happy that how everything portrayed with when it comes to doing the interviews and discovering um playing Mark Rose and NWA doing his voiceovers, finding Demetrius Ship to replace me and, and, and all eyes on me. And being, okay. you know, having a Phoenix Shakur say to me, no one has done what you have done for my son. Going 10 years strong with the truth about Tupac, interviewing everybody, Pac, you know, family members from the inner core of Mr. Shakur to family, friends, or foes. We got an interview with all of them. You go to Truth About Tupac on YouTube. You'll see why we got a billion minutes watch time, 250 million views and a million subscribers and mm. across social networks because without the fans and without the people, we wouldn't be able to get these stories to you. And um, again, thank you again. And I want to say again to the Vibe 95, it's your boy D-Love, West Coast, LA, and chilling on the Sunset Strip. Give you that Vibe 95, the way we do it West Coast staff. Yeah. Right. Happy that, birthday, Snoop. Happy birthday, Snoop. Thank you so much, brother, for everything that you did today. Do what you gotta do, have your, have 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 what what time is it up there? Lunch, dinner? It's like it's uh it's it's uh it's now going into uh lunch. Okay, lunch, 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 lunch. All right, so I'm gonna hit you. so we're gonna get off this, we're gonna get off this line. Thank you very much, Bob 95. Appreciate you. We appreciate the love. I know I know we're gonna make some money together because I'm about to present you with a bunch of stuff, trust me. And All I thank praises. you and I thank you for everything. God bless you and everything else. Is your is, is your grandfather's your grandfather's in here anymore, is he? No, he's okay, passed, so but he's in the paradise. Okay. He's in the paradise. Oh, and big okay. shout out to everybody who's lost somebody during this time. Rest in paradise to Kobe. Rest in paradise to Nip. Rest in paradise to Pot. And again, I want to say to everybody, Kwam Yasharala, rise, nation of Israel, rise. Let's utilize each other. Strength is in numbers. We're going to need each other in these days and time. Love one another. Keep these law, statutes, and commandments. Peace. Peace. Amen. Amen. My brother. All right. All praises. <laughs> Thank you.
Yes, but I did that long. I did that in March. Oh, old school. Oh, well, it's about that much money ago. But I'm going to say yes because he used to do that when he was younger in, in the rap game. Oh, okay. And um, let's say, is that mine? What? The plug. Oh! 